Alright, so let's do a little bit of SAS. Um, I'm going to assume you don't know much about the terminal. Um, if you do, that's fantastic, because that's where we're going to be doing a bit of our work, but it's nothing to be scared of. It's just like the mouse on steroids. So let's go ahead and get started. If we open up our terminal here, this will kind of open up. You can hit LS to list all of the different things. So right now I'm kind of in my my home, and these are all the directories. I'm going to go to the desktop, so that's change directory, cd, desk, and you can um, tab complete. So once you start a word, you can tab complete to see what, see if you can uh, kind of take a little shortcut there. So now we're in the desktop, and I've got a directory. If we hit ls again, I've got a directory called test. So I'm going to cd into my test directory, and then type clear to get us on the top there. <clears throat> So now we want to make sure we have SAS installed. So I'm just going to type SAS, I think it's SAS V. Check our version. So I'm on the most recent version of SAS. So you'll want to make sure you're there too, which I think is gem SAS update. But I don't want to run that because it'll take a minute. Um, but I think that's what it is. Uh, to make sure you're on the most recent version of SAS. Um, and that's one of the nice things about using the terminal and not worrying too much about plugins or add-ons because then you have to be dependent on somebody else to update the SAS but here you're kind of back in control which is the best case scenario so it's actually really really easy to use SAS you don't actually need technically you don't need anything else to start compiling your SAS into um, into CSS you just type SAS watch whoops double dash watch can't even spell. Um, and then you go to the directory. So SCSS, you can see over here, it's called style.css. Back up one, and then we do this little colon, and we tell it where we want it to compile to. So let's just say we've got an assets directory that's got some CSS, and we want the file to be called style, whoa, style.css. And then we hit enter. And then it's going to create that directory and spit out a CSS folder like we told it to with that folder name in it. And it's all compiled um, into a beautiful, wonderful CSS. And then if we make a change, so let's say we add, we've got some hash content with a avatar class inside of it, which has M, an image inside of it, which has a width of 100%. And then we save that. It's going to see that change and write the new um, CSS file with content.avatar uh, image with the width that we gave it. How sweet is that? And that's all you need to get started. Um, there are definitely bits and pieces that make it easier for different people's workflow depending on what kind of compression you want or um, different uh, things I, I use uh, live reload so that I can see my changes in real time uh, as I'm designing so that's all you need um, but I will take you further into my personal workflow on this project so I've got that same style.css this is a um, static project actually and so then I'm just importing all of my different um, style sheets that I've broken down uh, according to the site that I'm working on. Um, but let's take a look at how Live Reload works real quick. I'm going to open up, go back here, shut this down, CD back to my desktop, and then CD into uh, it's web. Oh, what's it called? ettn.io cd into that and then I'm going to start up my server if you hit the up arrow you can get to different commands that you've given in the past and I know I've done a PHP so this is going to start up my local host on port 8000 8000 and um, get my live reload going again uh, but actually before we do that let's um do it on this little test one with live reload we're going to open up create a project here for my desktop from the test folder and compile the SAS 
and it's going to put it right back in there. And I'm, let's say instead of doing the nested, let's do compressed and apply that. And then resave this. You'll see this little guy spin up here. And then hopefully our all of our styles are now compressed in one line, which is nice. It's like minified CSS. So that's another way to roll. And that's especially handy if we go back to this project. I've got my thing going, my server. So let's say we are in this project here, and this one's being watched. Um, this one's actually using Compass, so I've got a configure file, which is setting a lot of those settings for me. And then let's say I want to change my font size, and let's make this more readable, you know, or more wordage. Uh, you'll see that this will update. I won't have to refresh anything. So if you're like on a two a two screen setup, which I typically work on. You can have your, your project on one screen while you're actually editing your CSS on the other screen. So as you make changes in your in your uh, SAS, it'll uh, compress it, put it into its uh, CSS file, and then it's all minified and wonderful, as you can see. So that's the way I work. Yeah, but you can work in any mixture of any one of those um, different setups, uh, depending on what works best for you. You can start small and then kind of expand. That's what I did. I just started with SAS Watch for a long time and then I added Live Reload um, and then I eventually added Compass for a lot of the other bits and pieces that I was doing because Compass can do a lot. I'll admit that it can be, it can definitely be overkill, but I'd rather overkill than underkill. I want it to be dead, uh, wherever the analogy in there is. Uh, another cool thing with um, Live Reload is it's got this little snippet that you can add which turns this little browser piece on which you want when you're testing because this allows <clears throat> this turns on the JavaScript that reloads the page automatically but when you deploy to um, your host or your server your live server you don't want that happening because then you've got JavaScript in there that you don't need and it'll have to load that every time so I think it's in here yeah I set that script inside of the uh, if is dev um, static tag so that this will only generate if I'm in my development environment which you can see in the config settings, and we search, for, oh, it's right there. Uh, the environments, you can set your different um, dev environments. So my server is running off of localhost right now, and so uh, that will, anytime that this string is found with that little star or whatever um, port I'm using, uh, it'll load that piece of script. But anytime it's at my .com or elsewhere, it'll load the live uh, environment so it won't load that script which is good we don't want to load it unless we have to but just a little extra tidbit of information but that's how I use SAS uh, for my workflow hopefully you can get something out of it feel free to ask any more questions but definitely definitely keep using um, preprocessors to compile SAS because SAS is an amazing tool for writing CSS very succinctly and effectively efficiently and there's another one out there that I've just started using called Stylus, which is even more awesome. Um, don't really have anything to say about it because I haven't used it much yet, but it looks pretty sweet. You might want to check that out as well. <coughs> it's compiled with Node. Um, this one, SAS, is built off of Ruby, uh, although there's plenty of plugins and stuff that can run it, you know, compile it off of JavaScript or PHP even, but it's supposed to be run off of Ruby, so that's the way I've chosen to run it. But anyway. Hopefully you can get something out of that.